And Ian Plymer joins us now in the studio. Thanks for being here. Good evening. OK, is it really your claim that climate scientists have banded together in a kind of gang to commit a scientific fraud? Well, the IPCC is a group of fellow travellers who reinforce each other, but they're looking at the atmosphere. They're not looking at the total system of the planet, which includes the influence of space, the influence of sun, the influence of the oceans, ice and the earth. So this book is a holistic view of the planet. They are taking one part of the planet out and just the atmosphere. OK, it's a reasonable imputation, though, to suggest that they might be perpetrating a scientific fraud if you go by what's in your book. I mean, the culture of believers is now developed. They survive by playing safe to acquire research funding. Um, you keep making this analogy uh, to getting research funding being the main driving reason behind their science. Well, there's not much research money around. And if there is a war on cancer then there's more funds go into that war on cancer. If people are frightened witless about frying, then there's more research money goes into that. Now, there's a small coterie of climate comrades who review each other's work, be it a research grant or be it a research paper. They use the same set of data, and for some really surprising reason, they actually come up with the same conclusions. And I'm arguing that their view is a very, narrow, a very narrow scientific view and that science is much broader than their small view. So you say they've got everything to gain. I mean, you just heard what uh, uh, Mr Brooks said. I mean, it's just absurd to think that people just get together and agree on a party <coughs> line uh, before these IPCC reports. Well, Barry Brook is a biologist. He's done some very good work on the mass extinctions of macrofauna in Australia. That was the work that I referred to in the book. He's not a climate scientist. He's done no climate science. He should be complimented that his work is getting airtime in the public domain where it never normally would have got airtime. Barry's a colleague of mine, a good friend of mine. We're in the same building at the University of Adelaide. We he's have... pretty disturbed by what he's seen in your book. And he's oh, not the he, only he, one. I mean, he, uh, Professor Kurt Lambeck, who's uh, joined other Australian scientists in criticising your book, he says you've ignored or twisted information. He, like you, is a geophysicist. Well, I'm not a geophysicist. Well, he's, he's a, a geo geoscientist. He's a geophysicist who's done a lot of work on sea level changes. Um, what he hasn't looked at is the broad scale of sea level changes. Sea levels go up and down all the time. In my book... I show something that's well known, which he cannot dispute, and that is Eastern England is falling, Scotland's rising, Scandinavia's rising, Holland is sinking. So we're getting the land go up and down, we're getting sea levels go up and down, we've got this wonderful measuring station in Port Adelaide where sea level was measured here, and people have claimed sea level has actually risen. But in fact, the measuring station has fallen. It, he also has not done work on, say, Tuvalu, where the floor of the Pacific Ocean is sinking, and it's little wonder that Tuvalu is getting a relatively high sea level, but nowhere else in the world is. And again, his work is very narrow geophysical work, mainly in the Mediterranean area. But are you worried about his criticism of you? He, not I mean, at all. He calls your work sloppy. <clears throat> not he at says all. that uh, you've, you've misquoted or misrepresented things that he's said. Not at all. This is the normal business of science, where one argues about the data and they argue about the conclusions. And really, in the academic world, the bigger the argument, the smaller the issue. So I've got a thick skin. I'm quite used to having my science criticised, including criticised by myself, and that's a normal matter. And by contrast to what Barry Brooks says, this book is not a book of science. It's a book for the public who have felt quite disenfranchised and quite helpless that they have scientists talking down to them and they know there's a smell. They can't quite work out where the smell's from, but they know there's a smell. And this book is to give the public some information such that they can say, I think we're being led astray. OK, let's look at some of the...